So, Andrew, we're just talking, of course, about Greece. Uh, now, you think that th we're just probably not going to find an agreement, that this will be rolled over, we're going to have a series of defaults. Um, what does it mean for, for the markets? Uh, are they going to freak out when they realize, but then going back to more normal, or is that actually going to be a Lehman Brothers type moment? I would have thought that once you, uh, once you have a series of defaults and eventually uh, move to a Grexit, the, the markets won't like that initially. They'll be very worried about the consequences of that, so there'll be initial turbulence, but I don't think it will uh, spread very wide. So so I think after an initial period of turbulence, they again get the idea that that was actually uh, better. And it would actually, uh, I think over the medium term, it means that you can have a more decisive resolution to the whole Eurozone question. I think that you can move more towards the kind of uh, Franco-German proposals yesterday of establishing a Eurozone Treasury uh, and Eurozone Emergency Funds, which you can send out regularly to different parts. And I think that the whole Eurozone will work better once the Greeks are gone. So here's the problem with that. If, if the Greek economy works after this, that's an issue because you could start to see other politicians around Europe saying, that looks like quite a good idea. Absolutely. So if you were to have, for example, that the, uh, that the uh, Greek currency went down 50, 70, 90 percent, and then um, 18 months, two years later, they were growing 4 or 5 percent and unemployment was dropping like a stone, which I think is an entirely plausible scenario given the enormous unemployment that they have, so the underutilized resources, which there's the opportunity to take advantage of with a, a devaluation. Um, what, will uh, the voting classes in other countries see the big loss of wealth in Greece and say, oh dear, we don't want to participate in that, or will they see the, the turnaround in, the, in growth and say, well, why are we continuing to bear uh, the travails if that you've we got are? Kids, if you've got kids who are of an age, 18 years old, and, and they've in got Greece. no chance, oh, no, in Spain or anywhere, Spain. and they've got no chance of getting a job, I, that's going to that's significantly impact your thinking. See, I, I actually don't think the Spanish are that, that big an issue, because I think, again, similarly to Greece, the, the, the Spanish regard uh, EU and Euro membership and the participation in that as being the... the division between whether they were a developing economy in the 1970s yeah. through to an absolutely core part of the developed world and now. And, and I think that they see, won't want to risk moving away from any of that at all. So unless, the, unless they have a blueprint, right? And this is a problem. So, you know, I was at the OECD yesterday where there was a finance minister of Spain. And, there's, and, and people have always said the problem if Greece leaves, the problem is Greece defaults, is that in people's mind, they say, well, why am I taking this medicine? Why am I doing the reforms where we can just leave as well? See, I think, I think I think that that's much more applicable to say Portugal than it really is to, to, to Spain. I, I, yeah. just say, the Spanish have lived. The Spanish lived for quite a long time with 20% unemployment. If yeah. you, you've only got to go back 15 or 20 years, and they had an extended period of that. They, they, it's, they don't think of that as the kind of disaster which we would think of that, say, as in the UK. So uh, I would say that the, that the Spanish are much. I don't think that they're the real threat. I think that the, that the next uh, weakest um, uh, dominoes are Portugal and Cyprus. So Cyprus will have probably some contempt. Uh, I mean, it had contagion from yep. the Greek default in 2012, which led to its own problems later. Uh, whereas, and Portugal may be political contagion, but uh, I, 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 those, that would be the threat. I don't think Spain so much. In fact, in the case of Italy, I, m I might even think that they would look and they would see the level of loss of wealth. And given yeah. the importance of wealth in Italy, it's a very wealthy country, and people depend on the wealth of parents and so on to keep them going because of the strange labour market rules and so on. So I would say that the Italians will be particularly deterred by events in, in Greece subsequently. One other thing to say here is that though I'm optimistic about the scope for Greece to, uh, to do well, um, I think that the government is unlikely to be uh, adopting optimal policies by any means. So I think the danger of them after devaluation then uh, having some kind of protectionism and trying to keep weak industries going and not embracing structural change right. is quite high. So uh, the, 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 the initial turmoil could be high enough in Greece no. that that would actually act to encourage the others. One other thing I would say on this Oh, is Andrew, we have to go. Okay. Well, thank you so much. We'll have you back. Andrew okay. Luca, the Director <laughs> at Europe Economics.